What's up, Meta Nerds? This video will be a complete breakdown of the Wookiee Air Force, focusing on the Ovior Jet Catamaran and the smaller Radon Nass Fluttercraft. If you watch the Wookiee Species Breakdown, you'll know that these are a relatively peaceful people, despite living on top of the Shadowlands, an organic hellscape, and facing constant alien intervention from the Rakatans to what would be their longest lasting and most bitter enemy, the Trandoshans. These lizards live just a planet away in their shared solar system, and once Wookiee pelts became a status symbol, these people would forever be at war with each other. The first Wookiee spaceships were actually reverse engineered from crashed Trandoshan craft, but the Catamaran and Flutter craft were developed from their own primitive gliders, like those seen used by the Ewoks, and then over the years evolved with their lucrative trade networks established with the Republic. Ironically, and much to the Lizard's hatred, the Kladovac Guild was a group of prominent Wookiee cartographers, using their several hundred year lifespans to refine their knowledge of hyperspace lanes. Specialization over such long lives, combined with ancient archives that they kept to themselves, let them completely control routes lost to time, even those lost to Jedi and Republic charts. Their HQ was in the main tree on Kachiro, which is why the CIS invasion brought all their might down to bear on this beachhead but the Wookiees had been fighting off these mechanized monstrosities for 20 plus years at this point. The Trade Federation's greed led to bloodshed on Alaris Prime, where Chewbacca's pops, Atichatuk, had been working to establish a colony. Many of these ships you see being used are actually purchased from aliens, your galaxy-spanning corporations that provided things like the ubiquitous air cruiser. But back home, the only spacefaring, conventional-style ship produced by Apazana Engineering Works was the Azatuk Anti-Slaver Gunship capable of space travel, while also playing an in-atmosphere role similar to the LA-80. The OVR catamarans were slim, twin-hulled watercraft designed to glide over the waters of Kashyyyk at blistering speeds, kept off the surface by standard repulsors, and propelled by podracer-style jet engines. There was a civilian version that was just meant as a catamaran fishing vessel, also loved in races throughout the archipelagos. But ever since the Trade Federation and Trandoshan hunting raids started escalating in these past decades, these militarized versions were being pumped out rapidly, but still with the Wookiee craftsmanship you would expect. Carved from the durable Rashar timber, and named after the Ovior, a predator marine reptile that stalked the coasts. A beast famous for being agile and deadly. Looking into this cross-section, let's start at the engine located right at the center that keeps the weight balanced and is filled with solid fuel slugs stored in this area. It's the same kind of fuel used in AT-AT walkers. This top section is the heating elements used to liquefy the fuel, and these tubes being the exhaust vents. The power generator creates electricity sent through these cables into the struts to power the weaponry and repulsor lifts on each side. But the thrust is generated by these engines, attached via these struts that conceal the fuel lines. The tip of these thrusters have an array of wide-angle passive sensors, followed by a directional sensor, and beneath this upper air swoop we see the air intake regulators. Pressure release vents are on the top and bottom, with the igniter right at the fuel intake line, sparking off these combustion chambers, channeling the high-velocity exhaust past the nozzle. That provides the forward thrust, but the up and down action all happens over here in the anti-gravity generators, the powerful repulsors that allow it to soar through the air like a normal starship. Sitting right on top are a pair of Wookiees on each side, with the main pilot on the right and the co-pilot on the left, each with yokes that control the rudder, with actuators moving these side rudders that act more like wings almost always in the air, while the large part acts both for weight counterbalance and like a traditional rudder with these other two lower rudders providing more fine control both in air and in water. This section is empty here because the main beam of this rudder can be retracted for even more control, and to give it a smaller profile when navigating through trees or around the rocky coasts. This gunner is just using a mounted version of a standard Wookiee blaster rifle. It is true that some mounted guns are the same caliber as the ones carried by a single trooper, but they usually have something that makes them much more deadly, like an automatic 50 cal versus a bolt action 50 cal. But this is the same exact gun used by the Wooks that were rushing into the armored units on the beach. Let's pause to thank this video's sponsor, Dave. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 in 5 minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees, it's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest, and then settle up later. I was always afraid of high interest rates on these kind of advances. The insanity of knowing that you could easily pay it off next week, but you just have to make that payment now. Dave makes their money through the $1 membership and other optional products, making it so the loan itself has no interest and no late fees. Since 2017, they have saved people $2.5 billion in overdraft fees, and you can trust their record with over 71 million advances so far. Download Dave today at dave.com slash metanerds. That's dave.com slash metanerds, and you can get up to $500 in 5 minutes or less when you download Dave. 
No credit checks, no late fees. Be sure to check it out. This thing could be a lifesaver. And for terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. An amazing little detail here is that even the elderly at Tichituk is said to have practices throw in virtual reality games played on an addictive mind evaporator headset. This was written 20 years ago with a carpet species that lived in a galaxy far, far away, but everyone who grew up playing shooter video games can relate, and I'm sure even more so in the VR future. And like with the blaster, there's no fancy bombing tech, just a Wookiee dropping a thermal detonator on your head. Other odd details are the tactical tracker on the side, not really sure what that means, but we also get this simple windscreen up front, and the very tip slices through air and sea alike, but is stylistically based on the axe-like horn on the head of its namesake. And it is said, but never shown, that there were some versions that had retrofitted missile launchers and repeating blasters. So really, we could be seeing a civilian one pressed into service, Wookiee rednecks with a weapon mount laying around, rushing in to support the boys on the beach, and maybe we never actually saw the militarized version of this vehicle. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Though on defense, that rush hour wood is so durable that even when cut up into thin panels like this, it is still blaster resistant, but certainly wouldn't stand up to a proper starfighter. Though it's not really like that matters, as all unshielded fighters explode after a single strike anyways. I'm sure the pilot doesn't care if they die in a giant cloud of burning wood or molten durasteel. But I haven't even mentioned the wings yet, and that's because you don't actually need them. Everything shown allows it to work like a flying craft, and it seems like these dragonfly wings point to this being a traditional craft, where the nature-loving Wookiees used fluttercraft based on insect designs before they tried their hands at repulsor and jet tech. The Radon Asp doesn't have these large jets, and the base may have had repulsors, but honestly these areas on top and in the nose that contain the same power generators and exhaust vents could just be used to power the mounted rear gun, motivators for the bug-like legs, and likely power-hungry ornithopter action. With directional controls being achieved by the pilot using these yokes to simply angle them forward, back, left, and right. The Radaw absolutely needed these wings, but it would seem that this tech being on top of the catamaran was a holdover from earlier Wookiee flyer designs. And it didn't hurt to have, as it could likely act as an emergency backup if the complicated jet system and gravity bending repulsors failed mid flight. Now, the Oviore could hit a maximum altitude of 1,000 meters, enough to get you over the tallest buildings on Earth, though not enough to get you to the top of the greatest rush hour trees. It could hit a top speed skimming on the surface of 370 kilometers per hour, but in air it gets up to 420, or 260 miles per hour. While the NASP had a greater max speed of 540 kilometers per hour, or 336 miles per hour. It still makes both Wookiee craft slower than the LAAT, and less than half the speed of most starfighters. But they were far more affordable, with the NASP and OVR going for around 12k, which beats out even the mass-produced droid units like the Vulture. Perhaps this is the result of not being beholden to governmental inefficiencies like the Republic, or corporate profit-chasing greed like almost every other manufacturer, and so this price could be the actual cost to produce it and nothing more, which would align with other aspects of the tree people's culture. While the catamaran was more than twice the size of the NASP, at a length of 15.1 meters versus 7 meters, it would be around the size of a T-85 X-Wing and V-Wing respectively, with a height right in between these starfighters around 4.3 meters or 14 feet. Now what is sad is that this beauty only appears for brief moments in Republic Commando, but does nicely fit into the Wookiee Air Force style, using simple organic parts for as much as possible, floating like a blimp with this cloth and or leather gas-filled sack, tied down to the Roshar wood body, which houses the power supply for the guns up front, with these long stabilizers in the rear, and those turbines for directional control. The problem is, they are as weak as you'd expect. Uh -oh. It's General Grievous, and it looks like he's bringing company. Unarmored, slow, and large, they're really no match for any other craft out there. Just meant as a transport with some weaponry to clear out a landing zone. So that's it for the small but beautiful and unique Wookiee Air Force. As for behind the scenes facts, the original concept of the Wookiee catamaran was a watercraft until George Lucas envisioned it as a component of the Wookiee Air Force. Nearing the end of production, Lucas felt the catamaran lacked a clear visual representation of its ability to ascend and suggested adding a rotor head on top of the engine. This change occurred after a significant amount of the initial catamaran artwork had already been distributed to publishers of related books, which is why it's missing from this cross-section that was used. Initially termed the Dragonfly Helicopter in the conceptual stages, the NASP Flyer, also known as the Wookiee Ornithopter, evolved as a blend of exquisite wood craftsmanship and polished tubing, which was supposed to evoke brass instruments and show a transition in Wookiee technology. The Wookiee Ornithopter was primarily a computer-generated model, however for a detailed shot of its tail gunner, a basic full-size blue screen mock-up of the gunner seat was built at ILM. 
big enough to accommodate an actor in Wookiee costume and all. And although now more famous with the film, the Ornithopters or Thopters are indeed featured in the original Dune book by Frank Herbert. They mimic the flapping wing flight of birds and insects, and we know that Lucas has taken a ton of inspiration from Dune, just in vehicles alone, even with things named the Sandcrawler. Though there are real-world ornithopters as well. Coming from the Greek word ornithos, meaning bird, and pteron, meaning wings, they are a type of aircraft that fly by flapping their wings. Unlike fixed-wing aircraft, which rely on engine-driven rotors and propellers, ornithopters generate lift and propulsion through the flapping. And this concept goes back to at least Leonardo da Vinci. Despite the long-standing fascination with this form of flight, practical and efficient ornithopters have been challenging to develop due to their complexities of replicating the intricate wing movements. Though there has been success in small, unmanned vehicles, often for research, education, and surveillance. Though most expect this will be possible one day, as advances in material sciences and aerodynamics have led to increasingly more sophisticated designs in recent years. If you made it this far, please hit that like button, and check out these videos, I'm sure you'll like them. But most important of all, remember, there's nothing more ingenious and deadly than Redwood Wookie Rednecks, and the Force will be with you, always.